Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany and today's video, I'm gonna be talking you through how to navigate through the job finding process. Um, so if you don't know, I'm a recent graduate and I had to go through this process on my own. I kind of Googled specific questions to see where to start in my journey to find a job. And so today I'm going to talk you through some points that I think are really important and things to kind of hit or ask yourself when you are trying to find a job. I specifically think that it's important to ask yourself these five questions before you start looking for your job and it's just to help you pinpoint what you're really looking for. The first question is what field do I see myself in and I want you to ask yourself this and list three different specialties because you guys will know this when you start looking for a job but it is really just truly based on luck and timing whenever a job is out on the market and also when you get out of school or when you are certified, things like that. So the timing has to align for you to get a job in a specific field that you want. It's not always the case that you're going to get the first specialty that you want. So that's why I say to have at least a plan B or a plan C and in total have at least one to three options of what specialties you would want to go into if you can't get your number one. The second question to ask yourself is where are you willing to travel to? This is important because especially if you live in the New York area, the tri-state area in general, um, you most likely will have to commute, whether that be public transportation, by car, um, but if you live in the suburban areas, you might need to drive a long distance. If you live in the city, you could take the subway, the bus, whatever you need. And every person is different. I have a couple of friends that did not want to work in the city. And I also have some friends that only wanted to work in the city. So it's important for you to know where you're willing to travel and how long you're willing to travel, whether that be from your house or if you're going to get a new apartment, things like that. So that's something that you wanna keep in mind before you start researching where you wanna apply for jobs. Third question to ask yourself is, do you wanna work inpatient or outpatient? And likely by now you will know because you've done your rotations, you've seen what it's like to be in a hospital versus an outpatient practice. So if you still don't know and you're okay with both, then apply to both. Um, if you like a certain one and you have a preference, then only cater to that one setting. The next question is, what is your salary range that you're looking for? Now, as a new grad, it's really hard to kind of negotiate with this number because number one, you don't have much experience and um, you are a new graduate. So they they start you at your base salary. The difference is different hospitals have different base salaries. So if you are someone that's looking for a higher base salary, then maybe you will only apply to those hospitals that start at a higher number. If you don't care, you'll apply to every single one because you are willing to get a job and it doesn't really matter to you what your starting salary is. I will say that on top of your base salary, if you do night shift, then you will get a usually a 10% differential. If you do like holidays, there's also just like bonuses on top so that's also something to keep in mind and then also there are benefits that are really important and different for each hospital so don't just let that like salary number dictate where you want to take your job the next question and probably the most important is if you want to work ams pms or variable i didn't know what variable meant when i was looking at jobs so that just basically means both you're willing to work both and usually you'll be on a rotation so it's like two weeks morning two weeks uh, night shift and then you just keep switching throughout the year and then am and pm are self-explanatory i think these five questions are super important because they kind of give you a lot to base off of in terms of what you are looking for in a job listing so if you have your answers to all of these questions and you ultimately find a job listing that you're still interested in, you think that you would be a great fit, then that's when you would go ahead 
and submit your application. So one of the biggest things that a lot of my classmates and I had questions about was where to look for jobs. I know that our faculty made it very clear to look on official websites, right? So like Craigslist is definitely off the list. I personally stuck to LinkedIn and the hospital websites where they have a specific like link for their career opportunities. Um, and it's going to be different for you depending on where you live. But if you're in the New York area, the big hospitals you'll hear of are Northwell, Mount Sinai, New York Presbyterian, Montefiore, um, Maimonides, there's NYU Langone. So all of these hospitals have a talent team that tries to come and recruit people. And then you'll also see their listings on their website. Another way you can kind of hear about these job offers or job listings is through career fairs. I know my school has a lot of them. Um, hospitals will sometimes have them. Career like offices might send out email blasts, things like that. So keep your ears out. And then also talk to your faculty members. They are themselves practicing PAs. So they might know someone that's looking for another PA. They could recommend you. So word of mouth is really important and that's when networking comes into play. Um, so that could also be another way that you can find a job. All right, so once you found the listing that you want to apply to, it's important for you to clean up your CV. Um, there's so many ways you can do this and there's so many like YouTube videos that explain how to kind of organize your resume so that it looks neat and it's easy to read. Um, I would just say keep it to one page and keep the most important information at the very, very top because that is literally the only things that these talent people are going to look at and then also have your phone number and a email that they can reach out to you with um, because if they can't get in touch with you then there's really no point in sending them a resume sometimes cover letters are required i personally just wrote a cover letter and sent it to every single job application because it kind of explains like where i'm coming from as a practitioner um, and what I'm looking for. So if the person who's looking at it really, really wants to know more about you before they reach out, they'll read it. If they don't want to read it, then you've sent your cover letter and that's fine. That's the end of the day. So it doesn't hurt to send it. There are a lot of templates out there online. That's basically how I drafted my cover letter. I would advise to also apply to as many postings as possible. I know it's it's a lot because it gets really hard to keep track of. Um, I think for me personally, I kept it to maybe three at a time. And if I didn't hear back for a couple of weeks then I would go back um, onto the hospital websites and go through their listings again and see like what else I could apply for. And this rotation kind of helps because job postings are always changing um, up weekly. So if you, miss something the previous week you can find something new or there's another posting that you didn't see last week things like that so it's important to kind of work in a cycle and then also um you want to apply for everything at the same time meaning if you're going to do your three apply for all three at the same time because if you happen to get an interview you want to go on that interview and know simultaneously while you're so juggling the other two offers like if I want this one compared to this one um versus if you just had one offer but you didn't even go on any other interviews yet you can't really know if you would take that job if that makes any sense I don't know if I explained that correctly also if you're going to apply to more than three I would consider or I would advise you to keep a system to help you keep track of what is what listing um, I've heard some horror stories about people just applying to whatever and they'll get a call back and say like, oh, are you still interested in this job? And the person will reply with like, which job is this for? So as much as it seems like you are trying to get a job, they also want to know that this is something you really, really want because then otherwise the the talent acquisition person is just going to think that this is like another listing that you 
applied for and it's not something you want and it's more of a backup if that makes any sense All right and then lastly it's important to like i said have something that they can reach you out with so always check your voicemails your emails your spam ma mailbox because um they could be reaching out to you in multiple ways and if you aren't receiving them then you likely will never hear from them again all right so once you've applied to all these jobs listings that you've seen, the waiting game begins. And this is essentially when you're just waiting for the person to call you back. And hopefully you get scheduled for an interview. So that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you kind of got useful information out of it. Um, I will do my next video on how to prepare for an interview and then Hopefully soon I'll be able to tell you guys my story on how I found my dream job. Yeah, that's it for this video. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!